uh, let's say that you're an individual contributor mm -hmm. and you like being an individual contributor because that's just managing yourself, then you pr don't really fit the profile of being a good sales leader. Hello, I'm delighted to have Maria Nordstrom with me again. Welcome back. Well, thank you, John. Hey, you, you, again, these discussions have been great. We, we just had a great one that talked about customer centricity a, a, and, and how to get that in a high-performing culture. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, and we talked about sales leadership earlier as well yeah. and, and how it needs to be authentic. I want to talk a little bit about the process of getting the right sales leader in place. Mm. Um, it worries me sometimes that we, we really identify the wrong characteristics of a leader. You know, and sometimes we put that super salesperson definition up as a sales leader. Mm. Is, does that make sense to you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I've actually been um, thinking a lot about that. I've had some discussions uh, with people that are in recruitment and profiling, uh, yeah. as well as people that obviously recruit. And I've recruited a lot of sales leaders over the years. And I think one of the key things is, for me personally, is that there is a difference between a super sales person and a super sales person tends to be very driven, very much about an individual contribution, focusing on achieving their own individual personal results. Sometimes a very different behavioural profile to what a, a, a good authentic leader is. Absolutely. And I think it's very key as, as, a, as a sales leader or a super sales leader, as we described it uh, for this topic, was that, is that you, know, you really need to understand sales. You need to be understand, uh, really be able to pull sales apart, understand customers' buying behaviour, uh, to be able to add value to your salespeople. Uh, but I also think the leadership, the, the people leadership part, um, is very, very key. So you need to be able to lead, you need to be able to coach. And I also am a firm believer that coaching is not something, you know, you can have coaching sessions, mm. but I also think coaching is a behaviour yeah. that you use on the day-to-day -day as a conversation. When coaching came in um, to, the, to the workplace, it was more about you need to have a coaching session. Uh, and I be really, truly believe that if you have coaching conversations all the time, people get used to that kind of talk track. Well, we talked about the sport environment before, yeah. and it's the same thing. A coach in a sporting environment, it's not just the one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a person or whatever. It's, 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 it's coaching all the time, Absolutely. he or she, with, the, with all, yeah. all the members of the team, yeah. collectively or individually. Absolutely. And I think then you get used to the language, because coaching is very much about you helping yourself to actually answer a lot of your own questions. Rather than being told what to do. Absolutely. Mm. And so there's a very different, I guess, uh, language used. If you work like that all the time, people get used to it. Um, I think, though, in the, in the context of, of recruiting sales leaders, that part is really, really key. And a super sales person doesn't necessarily have that. Having said that, though, I've had brought some over, over the years, I have brought some super sales people into sales leadership. But they've been in a, I guess, in the stage of life where they've decided that they can add that value, but they actually want to lead other people. And when you have that mindset, is you can actually transition, even though it's quite hard, because mm -hmm. it's very easy to fall back on your old behavior. So the team is not performing, I'll go and do the work myself. Yeah. Which is the, um, you know, one of those things that you do as a new sales leader all the time, right? Or they're not delivering, I'm going to go and do the work myself. I think that's very easy when you're a super salesperson because you know you can do the work. Very tempting. I mean, you, yeah. you start panicking, we're not making the numbers. I know I can close that deal, so I'll go out and, and help the guy and yeah. you end up closing it yourself. Yeah, I'm really curious though because one of the conversations, having had these conversations, mainly because I was curious myself, I over the years would try to find the right person for the role and if the attitude and mindset is there, I would certainly consider a super salesperson into that role. But I'd be very cognizant of the fact that that's mm. a big transition. Having When I looked at talked to these people though in, in the recruitment space, and that may not be everybody, that may be only the people that I've been in contact with, um, but I found that the profiling they were looking for for a sales leader was generally a super salesperson. And to me, that's quite worrisome because I'd be surprised if organisations are truly looking for that kind of profile. And, and to the other worrying thing, a super salesperson with an extrovert personality, an extrovert character, 
which tends to be exactly what you don't want. You need exactly. not necessarily introverted, but much more uh, introverted than the, t the, out there, the extrovert out there. You need to be a, have good empathy, be a great, great listener, and to be able to coach properly with your people and take them Correct. through towards a in, in the direction uh, the organisation needs to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, th so the bottom line on this discussion is don't automatically grab the super salesperson look for the behavioural characteristics that you need uh, w within an org a, a person that w w that really helps them become an authentic leader. Absolutely. And, and not out there showing people how it should be done by doing it no. themselves. And as I said before, you really truly need to understand the customer's buying behaviour and buying cycle. You really need to understand the process and understand sales. You need to be a good people leader. There's a difference between managing process and leading people. Uh, and I think the, um, the other part is the coaching. And you need to be able, mm. as you said, you need to be able to listen. You need to be able to translate information. You need to be able to basically take that information, do something with it, mm -hmm. and deliver it back. And in doing that, you need to also then be very congruent with your own beliefs. And if you really are, I think, a super salesperson, or let's say that you're an individual contributor, Mm -hmm. and you like being an individual contributor because that's just managing yourself, then you p don't really fit the profile of being a good sales leader. And there's nothing wrong with being that super salesperson working well, well within a team context, but Absolutely a super salesperson, uh, you don't initially have to move on into a management career. Correct. Okay, great discussion. Yeah. I think there's good value there. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.